Professor speak. Or... Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, audience, uh, for making. Uh, sorry for making you wait uh, some some amount of time. Um, thank you, uh, possibly, sir. Um, it's my uh, pleasure to be part of this uh, uh, invited lecture. As our possibly, sir, has uh, told me, told uh, told all of you. Right. Uh, so I am an alumnus, proud alumnus of uh, Mudra Nair Government Polytechnic. <coughs> so I studied uh, in Mudra Nair Government Polytechnic uh, in 1984 uh, and 1987, between 1984 and 1987, graduated over there. So because of uh, the eminent teachers uh, like Pasvari sir, uh, then so we were able to gain so much of knowledge and MNGP has got a long, uh, lot of reputation. So it has produced a lot of talented engineers. They are all working uh, for the Pondicherry government and the government of India. And uh, many of them are entrepreneurs and, and so on. So we have got a very good uh, uh, you know, uh, trade for uh, this MNGP is considered. So uh, last week when Sir asked you know, in, the, in the presence of this uh, uh, COVID, so why not you deliver some talk to our students? So I immediately accepted for this particular thing. So now I am delivering uh, from Pondicherry Engineering College. I am now right now in Pondicherry Engineering College. Um, thank you for uh, the coordinators also. Uh, 
uh, uh, Mr. Jagannathan and others, Suranti Madam and everybody for nicely organizing this particular lecture. <laughs> right. So now uh, I will proceed with uh, the given topic uh, for me. Uh, there is a trends in digital technologies. Even uh, the topic uh, that uh, to be discussed here um, was uh, uh, asked uh, by uh, uh, Pasubadi sir, so that uh, you know, I have thought, well, what should I give? Because uh, so, so far I have been given uh, talks on digital uh, microprocessors, computers, hardware, and uh, so on. <laughs> Let me check the audibility. Uh, just see if I'm audible. Okay. Uh, am I audible now? <coughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so thank you. Uh, So uh, my slides are uh, going here. So I have organized uh, the thing because uh, we have got only a little amount of time, you know, an hour of time to speak to all of you. Uh, you know, I have organized uh, uh, in this way. I just started discussing on you know, what is analog and what is digital. What is this digital technology? Digital is not all that new. Uh, so it's uh, it's it's. Uh, Basically, um, yeah, it has been there. It, it has been existent for several years. Now, uh, it has been more than 30 years that I have graduated from Polytechnic. And uh, even before that, you know, the digital technologies were there. So, but today people are talking about uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, things about digital, digital transactions and all that. So, uh, I thought uh, uh, I would just share some information on that particular. So what is analog and uh, what is uh, digital? So the two, two things basically. Whatever uh, that uh, we see, we feel, we, we feel, we see, etc. right, in, around us, uh, what we listen, sound, for example, music, etc. So all these things are basically uh, analog quantities. Basically, they are characterized by the physical quantities, right? The, they can be represented by the physical quantities, right? So, uh, such as the temperature, the humidity, the velocity and pressure, weight of a particular object and so on. If you take uh, all these kind of quantities, physically representable quantities, which uh, got their own unit of measure like degree centigrade, degree Fahrenheit, humidity, etc. So the values are continuously uh, changing, right? So, so we don't say that you know it is white or black only. So we have different shades of the color. We don't say that it is either uh, 100 degrees centigrade or 35 degrees centigrade or zero degrees centigrade like that. The temperature varies. The temperature varies and so on, right? Um, so in that context, whatever uh, that we see, what that we leave, we breathe, that thing is analog in nature, right? So, but when the computers came into existence. So the main philosophy that they have taken into consideration was uh, about the digital. Fundamentally, we called it as the digital computers. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay.
Uh, am I audible now? Uh, am I audible? I hope uh, I'm audible now, right? We'll be audible. Right. So once again, I uh, uh, regret for uh, the inconvenience caused because of this uh, interruption in the internet. Right. So I thought I would deliver my best from my college where uh, I, we have a national knowledge network. So which has got one Gbps, that is thousand Mbps link is there. So I thought everything would be perfect. Uh, so that is why I said I went there, but suddenly due to some reason uh, it failed. So uh, sorry for disappointing you. So I'll proceed now. Thanks for uh, staying uh, with me uh, for a while. So now I will continue with the discussion. So what we have seen uh, in the previous thing is about analog versus the digital, right? So we have talked about the world is all about analog, right? And uh, uh, I mean, it takes continuous values. Uh, if you look at that as a graph of uh, amplitude versus time, so the signal, any signal for that matter, you know, the speech or the sound or uh, temperature, whatever the physical quantities that we deal with, uh, takes uh, continuous point in space, right? So, whereas uh, the digital uh, deals only with uh, uh, only with uh, uh, two discrete values, zeros and ones. Basically, as I already told you, so these has been uh, contributions from mathematicians, the computer science, the forefathers are the mathematicians, right? So they they have proposed so many interesting theorems and all that. So. So even the Boolean is also one of the very popular mathematician who has given uh, Boolean algebra concept, right? Prepositions and all that. So that has been adopted in electronics industry. So we came out with uh, things like uh, logic gates, AND gate, OR gate, OR gate and all that. So uh, the diploma students studying in electronics, computer science, information technology kind of things might have uh, studied uh, these things in your um, uh, second semester, the third semester, right? So it was really a fun for me uh, way back in 1986 when I studied uh, under the guidance of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the, pr the present uh, principal, uh, Pasapati sir, and uh, there's another very interesting professor called uh, Vijay Rangam. So they have very uh, nicely taught about the fundamentals of these gates, logic gates and all that. So I got inspired and uh, that has uh, de defined my career in fact. So as you might be aware, uh, these uh, circuits uh, made out of uh, these uh, basic gates, uh, the AND gates, OR gates, etc., are uh, in turn basically uh, made using um, the resistor uh, and the transistors and the diodes, combination of the passive components and the active components and all that, right? So they can be constructed in a, such, in a way that uh, it delivers some output based on some input, right? one or more number of inputs decide what is going to be the output in the real time, in the real time. So such kind of circuits, which we call them as a combinational logic. Otherwise, if uh, there is a notion of time, right, when there is a synchronization uh, uh, with respect to some signal is available. So integrated circuits. So integrated circuits are basically population of uh, several number of components in in, uh, in just uh, uh, one silicon area, chip area, right? So several gates in, in fact. So yeah, as you might be aware, uh, so we have a wide range of uh, integrated uh, circuits classifications based on how many number of gates make one integrated circuitry, such as uh, um, uh, uh, small scale integration, medium scale integration, and so on. So today we have VLSI and, and ultra VLSI is also available. So they're all basically categorized by how many number of gates are populated into a single chip environment is considered. So, so when we studied integrated circuitry, circuits was a separate subject. So how integrated circuits are fabricated and then how to use them in the, in the in various applications was a subject to us. So we have to have handful of ICs uh, in front of us in the laboratory environment. So where we have to hook on to various pins identify which is an input pin, which is output pin, which is a biasing pin, which is a power supply pin and so on and so on, right? 
so the microprocessors are uh, basically um, uh, invented way back in 1970s early 1970s 72 or 74 right so by intel and other kind of company toshiba and other kind of companies so basically the microprocessors as you might be aware um uh, as uh, basically uh, having sequential logic and uh, some kind of memory also right so registers in the form of the registers and kind of things basically it permits you to de develop some programmed logics right so you can have a system wherein that things can be done one after another sequential logic is available there, right so the moment microprocessors came into the market it found a lot of applications in numerous applications in industrial automation and so on and it was the pc the personal computer industry which has adopted right so as popularly said the microprocessors are considered to be the heart of any computing system is considered right heart of any computing system like the 90 i mean uh, 8080 the intel family of microprocessors started with 8080 80x kind of processes and very interesting they have evolved and uh, kind of things so it has got its own language yeah without software there is no system so there is also an assembly language so the microprocessors came with their own assembly language so every microprocessor would have its own uh, instruction set and so on so the people had to study all those kind of things the next evolution to the microprocessors were the microcontrollers right the compactness right the compactness uh, is a very interesting thing uh, that uh, one should understand about the evolution of the electronics the microelectronics field is considered because of the wireless safe trends and the wireless safe technologies people were able to bring in many components in just one single silicon chip area right so microcontrollers uh, uh, hope uh, the viewers will will be able to tell me the difference between the microprocessors and uh, yeah uh, the microcontrollers right so the microcontrollers are the ch single chip uh, solution wherein um, that particular thing the microprocessor memory and all the peripheral chips would be coming over there right so so very interesting thing so today we call them as embedded systems systems designed with these kind of microcontrollers or or what are called as the embedded systems right so the difference between the embedded systems and uh, the uh, computers are that the computers are general purpose general purpose computing right so they you can use it for uh, any purposes you can use it for playing games you can use it for uh, uh, accounting purposes you can use it for teaching and learning etc etc whereas embedded systems are design system designed to carry out some uh, uh, predefined set of uh, kind of things embedded systems so both of them required this microprocessor is said to be the heart of any computing system is considered right fine so that that's a remarkable uh, trend in the digital technologies right so on one side general purpose computers and on another side uh, industry automation through these kind of embedded systems came to existence today we people talk about um, uh, what do you call no these kind of uh, uh, arduino boards and other kind of boards right so they are being taught and uh, learnt by the students in a uh, we say the, the learning curve is very steeper today unlike uh, the learning curve of the, our generation when we studied we had to remember for example the micro very famous microprocessor 8085 has had as many as 75 instructions 75 different instruction mnemonics the when we go in for the 8086 and the kind of processes it has crossed 100 and several number of addressing modes flags and so on so unless otherwise you have a thorough knowledge of all of all these kind of things you cannot build a system but today it becomes so easy right you just uh, buy uh, some arduino boards for 500 rupees or so it's a complete system in a very small environment and uh, you need not have to know about internal architecture its uh, instruction mnemonic what microcontroller it is doing and all that we have beautiful libraries software libraries available so you have to have only the creativity what application you want to do and in just a couple of hours or a couple of days you can build the entire systems so technology has matured enough in that particular thing right so that is why i used to tell my own colleagues also that when we do going for this kind of syllabus revisions and all that better we give away this kind of uh, assembly language programming and all that there is no point in teaching assembly language uh, programming in our case because you know we have a beautiful uh, uh, you know high level languages have come using which we can build the systems 
without going in depth about uh, the chips their architecture etc right of course we need to know about the architecture organization how exactly they are working but we should also uh, i mean understand how the world is progressing so we should be able to develop the products in a very rapid amount of time that's very well so uh, that's about the evolution of the digital technology starting from the gates the integrated circuits the microprocessors the microcontrollers and so on right that has led to an interesting concept of computing two kind of computings general purpose and embedded computing etc and then slowly there has been a lot of innovations going on in the communication industry also so when we say communications telephony right telecommunications was existent even before the advent of uh, the computers came into existence right so uh, starting from 1900 onwards this was invented and it was in use worldwide people have been using the telephone personal communication voice communication etc but slowly these digital technologies right the uh, you know the boolean algebra all the mathematicians have contributed uh, theory on these kind of uh, number systems and all that people have adopted and found that they can be very well applied in the communication also there was a major shift from uh, analog to the digital right so your speech or voice is basically analog time varying quantity right so it is basically uh, uh, available in a, a frequency spectrum starting uh, from about some 300 hertz to 4000 hertz right so the time varying quantity is available so in those days the analog telephony systems telephone exchanges were such that basically there used to be switching elements so you make a call to a person the 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 pair of wires are established from the mouthpiece from your mouthpiece right so they, this will be going on right so directly to the uh, air piece of uh, the recipient is concerned but slowly uh, the communication industry has adopted this so starting from the second generation onwards slowly they have introduced digital concepts such as sms where they said that you know you can even even have uh, cellular mobile networks where you can have uh, switching based on the digital technologies and uh, uh, along with the voice to certain extent uh, text uh, textual information can also be sent etc has been proved and today we have the third generation fourth generation we are moving towards the fifth generation all are the advent of the technological trends that are taking place in digital economics right hope you follow me yeah okay uh, okay so now the very idea of this particular presentation you know as i as uh, uh, the principal uh, uh, said in the morning uh, the the talk uh, is basically aimed for uh, the students of the polytechnic students and somehow uh, this particular link has been shared to many people i don't know how many of your polytechnic students how many of uh, you are already graduate and working in some kind of things so uh, so i just try to balance between uh, the two types of uh, the audiences that are already here All right so i just wanted to throw some lights on uh, some the technologies the technology that you may be aware and uh, for someone who are not aware you can explore because learning is all about uh, exploration and exploitation right so in in a few minutes in a few other slides i'll be very quickly rushing through some of the interesting aspects uh, in the digital technologies present and the future right so <clears throat> the communication uh, systems i started from the sampling theorem quantization techniques right so and a lot of contribution from the information theory and then the coding techniques right various coding techniques which are applied to the modern techniques like such as uh, modulation techniques there was a shift from analog modulation techniques am fm etc to uh, the digital modulation techniques uh, such as uh, ask psk fsk uh, qpsk etc kind of things which has proved that you know the data rate the rate at which the data can be transferred uh, wirelessly or on a wired medium also uh, could be enhanced enhanced and uh, that could be matched with the speed of speed uh, that of a wire please remember uh, when you say the connectivity uh, when you have the choice of whether the wired or the wireless wired is always the best when you are connected to the with the wire it is always the best right so we have uh, copper wire we have uh, optical fiber communication uh, systems and all that so they used to give a huge amount of bandwidth but the wireless was not that way right so in those days wireless used to give 
only data rate in the th- in terms of kilobits per second whereas the wired counterpart used to give uh, you know in terms of megabits per second and uh, optical fiber as you might be aware gives minimum of uh, 1000 mbps gigabits per second kind of thing is possible today right so because of this uh, digital technologies application of this uh, coding techniques uh, information theoretical concepts uh, have proved that you know the data rate can be matched with that of uh, your wired counterpart and thereby even the streaming applications right now today we are streaming the streaming applications can be done with the uh, advent of these digital technologies wirelessly also right so that is a, a breakthrough uh, in, in this particular thing and it is also applied in various things not only the communication systems information security also in the form of the cryptography hashing algorithms authentication and so on so it finds applications in the hardware software right in the uh, communication field effective utilization of the frequency spectrum because the frequency spectrum as you might be aware is a scarce resource that is why the government agencies are going in for auctions auctions of the available frequency spectrum 2g spectrum 3g spectrum is being auctioned and then it is being given for the service providers there is a lot of revenue model associated with that particular thing, right so the available frequency spectrum uh, basically they are the numbers is very uh, little and scarce so how do we use that particular thing for example in those days we have uh, had things like uh, time division multiplexing space division multiplexing they were not found to be suitable for increasing the number of users and increasing the number of uh, customer base and all that today we have uh, uh, spread spectrum techniques right so along with this kind of uh, digital techniques which gives you uh, i mean a large scale customer base and all that. so all these things are possible with the help of this coding techniques so today we have applications in terms of the near field communications wireless body area networks and starting from this near field communications to even satellite communications this kind of things are being applied and we also have interterrestrial communications also in the research fine so digital technologies right so adoption of the digital principles in the technologies right we we see right we we have been seeing and we are seeing and we will be witnessing a lot more in future also these are some of the examples televisions of the past in our generation were analog in in fact uh, we have uh, studied a separate subject called television engineering uh, uh, which was uh, an elective subject that we have studied in those days right so today we have uh, even the television systems have become complete uh, digital right the way that the internal part of the television systems work has become a complete digital not only digital even the communication part has also has been incorporated so today we have something called the smart t- televisions even the cable tvs of the past which was analog is now becoming a uh, purely a digital set top box devices so these digitally enabled uh, set top boxes help um, you know the industries to make revenues also you know, they can exactly identify how many subscribers are available which are the channels being uh, watched by the people all these kind of analytical purposes this is very very useful so digital uh, technology things are being utilized properly right and today it we, we witness in the in the covid 19 several things have become topsy turvy right so we are witnessing so more than about 70 days we are locked at home we are not able to go to the institutions there are no classroom teachings and all that no cinema theaters and all that so several things are changing right the ott the over the top streaming platforms have become handy for us right still uh, we are being locked at home we are able to use this kind of ott to see a lot of uh, movies that are being released and uh, web series and kind of things yes we are seeing so they are all possible with the help of this digital technologies so even our teaching and learning methodology has changed a lot right a lot of uh, this kind of uh, virtual classrooms kind of things are taking place so this uh, slide that you are being uh, seeing here is what is called as a gartner hyper cycle right so gartner.com when you visit is basically an agency right so which studies which researches about various technologies right which the people or the industries are thinking about and i mean uh, what is about the expectation how the technology is going to evolve and all that and this particular thing is representing uh, as of august uh, 
2019 right so every year or uh, every year uh, two times they study and then publish these kind of various technologies so here you can see a lot of interesting uh, uh, technologies right which are being expected and the curve shows the following right so the curve that you are seeing here so i mean the expectations are i mean slowly increasing and then it goes to the peak and then it settles and then it takes some amount of time to come to the plateau of the productivity productivity they come to the reality the x axis says the time and the y axis says the expectations right various interesting technologies almost all of them are i would say digitally enabled technologies right some of them we will discuss right the 5g we are seeing is at the top of it the 5g that you are seeing here is at the top the peak of the inflated expectations right that is going to come to the reality and already some companies have come very soon uh, we are going to have that particular reality right so we have something called the 3d printing right in this particular talk i just wanted to throw some light especially for the budding diploma engineers is in the college in your uh, institutes or even engineering college students may not have much of exposure to the 3d printing but it's 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 a very upcoming interesting field already uh, a lot of uh, revenue is going on a lot of uh, business opportunities are available into that particular thing so if though they are not introduced in your curriculum you don't have some facilities in the colleges right you can venture into that particular you can go for some kind of training right you can become an entrepreneur so the only thing is that you should learn the technology and then you have to uh, apply them right so this shows for example uh, 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 the plateau will be reached uh, for some technologies less than in 2 years very fastly some technologies will take about some 2 to 5 years for example the 5g technology right and some technologies what where you are seeing like uh, uh, decentralized with uh, cloud and all that would take even 10 years and kind of things the ones that you are seeing here uh or uh, you know obsolete obsolete before period kind of things, right very interesting things so uh, because of the shortage of time uh, i will not speak much on this please visit gotner.com and then you will have more idea of that particular things so as i said i just wanted to throw some light on this particular technology printers you know printers are basically use uh, in output devices right peripheral devices which used to take uh, 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 take uh, uh, this kind of uh, hot copy of your documents and all that right in the paper so we started with the dot matrix printers it started with uh, uh, it, it started with uh, 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 thing and kind of things right <coughs> dot matrix printers um, kind of things but uh, there is an interesting uh, thing called uh, 3d printers what is the 3d three dimensional right so in spite of printing two dimensional matter on a two, uh, paper right so suppose that you want to design uh, uh, some box some kind of scale some kind of uh, tool that you want to do some kind of toy that you want to do so because of your creativity say you are able to model using some computer aided design softwares you want to have fabricate that particular thing so what do you do right so normally you have to rely on the mechanical engineers you know just go you give the 3d 3d pictures and all that they use some lathe kind of mechanics and all that they used to do that right so 3d printers as the name suggests right are the devices which takes your uh, data uh, in a particular format in a in a particular format uh, and then it would produce that particular product so as you can see from here this particular thing right some toys are being produced and these are basically the 3d printers different kind of 3d printers are available right a couple of years before i had an opportunity to visit uh, um a center in uh, hyderabad where uh, i was uh, uh, ha uh, having an opportunity to visit a 3d printing laboratory it was an amazing experience for me a demo was given right the technology was not new this was there since 2000 till for about some 10 to 12 years it was not revealed because of the copyright laws and patenting laws and kind of things right the ideas were available only with um, the people who have created these ideas and then to make this kind of public uh, kind of things it took about some 12 years now today you can even buy these kind of 3d printers as low as 15000 rupees 15000 rupees a low end 3d printer you can buy a lot of third party tools are available where you can design ready made the things are also available so you can transform your um, idea into this particular thing right 
so please uh, uh, visit a website called 3 ding 3 dingcom where they continuously give some uh, these kind of webinars and uh, they have a lot of resources and kind of things are available right so you can recommend for your educational institutions also right so pondicherry engineering college also is in the view of uh, i mean setting up a 3d printing laboratory and i was told that you know already many institutes like iit hyderabad anna university even anna university syllabus also i was told that first year it has been made as a mandatory thing 3d printing has been given as a mandatory thing right so you people might have studied um, uh, what do you call uh, this um, uh, technical drawing right technical drawing right so technical drawing now in this generation you have to now shift into this kind of use of uh, 3d printing right so the cost is also very low today uh, affordable not only for the institutions to buy and then show demo to the students but even the individuals right even in the individuals the students the budding students right you can uh, buy and then experiment you can come out with interesting uh, uh, things also so this particular thing i wanted to uh, include in my lecture and these are all uh, some high end kind of things so these are all some of the latest technologies uh, according to this gartner hyper automation right basically the machine learning artificial intelligence blend of these things right rpa robotic process automation tool kind of things so they help in coming out with a different kind of iq intelligent question bot intelligent document processing tools and kind of things right so these are the potential areas where uh, the people can venture into right human augmentation is a very fantastic uh, application of the digital technologies the present and the future many of us may not be aware of that particular thing some of uh, you may be aware of this kind of things right the top rated uh, technologies and augmentation what is the human augmentation basically enhance the human abilities through some technology or the combination of the medicine also so uh, so medicine te technology also right there's a biotechnology and kind, kind of things so enhance the human abilities right so such kind of things could be categorized into thing invasive or non invasive uh, here uh, there is a mistake it is not invasive invasive versus non invasive it should have been non invasive invasive in the sense that you know you create some kind of uh, things maybe chemical or some kind of devices uh, implant implant into the human bodies right and then monitor something or then otherwise enhance the ability of a particular person so that's a very interesting science interesting interesting art of science we could have to do that right so these are some of the examples right we can visit in the google you can just do naked uh, uh, prosthetics e sight cochlear implant implantation cochlear implantation implants means for uh, the people with uh, uh, defects hearing defects right so we have our devices today uh, implant such kind of things that they can uh, hear the sounds and music etc like us kind of things bioprinting very interesting thing 3d printing that i talked about bioprinting is basically an application of the 3d printing where uh, even the, some of the bodies some broken bodies for example the finger and other kind of things uh, ears nose etc like this uh, thing they can be fabricated using the um, bioprinting technologies that can be implanted into the people so echo uh, exoskeletrons as i said this is another uh, uh, very interesting application of that neuralink basically this is a very interesting concept by elon musk a scientist as you may aware uh, it's a brain computer interface where uh, he anticipates that you know uh, some chips can be designed and then you know it can be stimulated to the brain and then the way that uh, the brain is acting can be controlled by some other person also so these are all imaginary future kind of things who knows in just a couple of years or five years or after this things may come in reality so we will relapse earbuds as you can see from here these are the earbuds right basically they help in translation real time translation of the languages so a couple of months ago you might have seen uh, in the national geography channel uh, uh, man and wild you know program where uh, or modi ji uh, prime minister modi ji and some one of the program rajnikanth was you know uh, taking part into that particular he was conversing with the host the host only knows only the english and you know uh, 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 rajnikanth or uh, you know uh, modi ji was not going so modi ji was talking in hindi so the people of 
two different languages they want to have some kind of translation in real time so this is a very interesting application of the digital technology signal processing technology hardware combination of embedded systems where uh, you know this is an example where you are seeing kind of things are already in place experimentation and they are being used so you talk in one ingla- one language the another person may not know that your language is it's immediately interpreted and so on right without the need for a third party kind of things real time google lens is a very interesting application again holo lens is from the microsoft there are nanobots there are artificial blood cells for example here we can see here on oh, the this i may be hiding here i'll just move yeah and maybe hard yes so as you can see from here um uh, here um so so you can have a uh, device some small devices you know that can be injected inside your body and then uh, you can go and then uh, control some of the cells that is also possible right so nanobots there what are called the nanobots here nanobots here and then as i said synthetic uh, i mean artificial blood cell and uh, so these kind of 3d uh, 3d printing things are already in use motion savvy is another interesting thing you can just google it out and then find human augmentation technique right so tab based android based applications are available which helps people to exchange their ideas in just by sign language something that you called as sign language uh, very interesting thing you know, is a synthetic memory chip right this is proposed by a scientist called theodor berger neuroscientist right so just by implanting some kind of uh, uh, memory chip you know your memory power can be enhanced right many a times we forget things right so this is very interesting research that is going on maybe in the future near future these things will come into reality right where uh, like you say how you uh, enhance your mobile phones and other kind of these things with uh, uh, high amount of memory your uh, memory power also can be increased a lot or you can afford to delete or you can put you can get connected to the cloud platforms and all that another very interesting uh, thing is a invisibility cloak make things invisible for example in this diagram you can see uh, you know very interesting technologies um, yeah i'll just show you yeah i think now this is visible to you uh, okay yes so as you can see here a girl or a woman wearing a t-shirt you know looks like you know her face is not seen only the shirt is available and all that these are all things that you might have watched in harry potter movies and other kind of things but today technology helps you you know just uh, it is like a magic right uh, you you can give that kind of illusion also this kind of human augmentation the way that we perceive kind of things can be synthesized is a very interesting application of the digital technologies that, that's what i want to tell you so uh, so, so uh, these topics might have been high five 3d maybe as yes, you can venture and then we can start learning that particular thing whereas uh, this kind of human augmentation may be some high five topics that you may not uh, immediately venture into that but you can slowly learn or you become user of that particular thing. so when you say digital digital technologies and all that right we cannot uh, get away from this government of india's mission right modi ji has been telling several number of times digital india right moving towards a digital india. There's so much of digital india missions initiatives that are all about into that so one can see several kind of things in digitalindia.gov.in right so right uh, uh, for example other kind of things uh, digital digital locker very interesting thing right so some of you might uh, be aware of this kind of digital locker right so these are some of the very important features that i wanted to share to this particular audience right my experience and all that you as you might be aware digital locker is a government of india initiative where you can uh, uh, store and retrieve your important documents certificates and all that that is one thing yeah you might ask yeah i can i am already doing that with my google cloud and all that but it is it is a secured uh, thing with a uh, government of india portal so that is one thing another interesting thing is that your certificates can be directly issued by the concerned author- authorities for example uh, um, road transport authority can directly uh, driving licenses if it expires it can be immediately pushed over there your mark list 
your uh, university market your degrees etc can be uh, you know uh, digitally signed and then it can be pushed it is not that you scan your document and then upload it and then uh, fetch it it is not as simple as that right it's a very interesting application uh, again uh, last year i had an opportunity to visit um, there's a um, electronic governance right uh, department of uh, india right eg electronic governance and so i have i had an opportunity to discuss with them so they come out with very interesting thing where the institutes like universities colleges etc can actually push their documents to the individual students uh, kind of thing so that the certificates can be directly given there is no need for hard copy and all that so that is considered to be uh, valid and for admission processes and all that the using the metadata the marks secured the grades cgp etc can be immediately populated there is no need for manual entry the manual entering of the data etc only uh, incurs a lot of time and then it in, yeah, i mean it, it incurs a lot of verification mistakes or kind of things so no mistakes at all automatically the interfaces can be done with digi locker right there is a very interesting application initiative of the government of india right so as you can see from here more than 35 crore education certificates have already been given by uh, negd national electronic uh, governance division right so you people can also venture into that particular thing i mean from the learning perspective you can understand how you become certificate issuer how we can write codes there are a lot of uh, apis available right which you can learn automatically and because it's a very small session i just throw light maybe in future we can see uh, a dedicated session of uh, on these kind of topics how to write your co own course so digital locker digital marketing is another very interesting application smart campaigning is possible right so when you want to advertise on your business conventionally people have been going on through the newspapers television medium and all that right you know how expensive it is to give a very small uh, piece of text uh, in the newspapers depending upon the coverage area and all that right so today uh, i mean it costs heavily you may have to minimum spend about 10000 rupees you want to give some very small size advertisement in news dailies it may reach only to the people of pondicherry maybe up to kadalu so if you want to give it for the nation wide you have to go in for 50000 1 lakh and so on and so on today today with the advent of these search engines and other kind of things artificial intelligence big big data analytics and all that smart campaigning has become a very interesting application even very recently i have also Uh, started learning about it and i also used this particular technique for my own college also admission kind of things right smart campaign for example the google ads right it helps you to advertise on your products right what are the products business that you are doing that it charges only pay per click it will show your advertisement contents maybe text or some this uh, uh, visually rich uh, graphical things also right to a selected uh, targeted people not only not for everybody it is going to go only for the targeted audience you can choose the zone whether you want to uh, advertise only in say tamil nadu whether only in pondicherry whether south india or uh, the whole india or you just want to advertise in particular part of the world and all that of course depending upon the coverage area the cost is also no but the thing is that guaranteed uh, things you know you can you can decide on your budget flexible budgets are also also available in this particular so the google ads kind of things is only an example i'm not just i'm not promoting only google there are a lot of other kind of things are also available so they charge uh, the things expenses only on pay per click how many people have really visited your website depending upon that only it is going to be right right so google adsense uh, google ads there are some of the ways by which digital marketing is possible right digital marketing you can cannot be just said in just one slide of course it, it, it's a huge topic i just wanted to throw some light on this particular thing so the for the budding uh, diploma engineers maybe after you graduate right so you can become an entrepreneur you can you know apply your mind you can come out with your own kind of thing and you can use this kind of techniques to promote your business that is why i'm just telling you these are other uh, digital marketing portals scm crash of spot most google analytics canva full suit and so on so exhaustively so you can explore by yourself
So when we talk about digital technologies, right, we cannot stop uh, talking on digital transactions today, especially in the uh, pandemic COVID, right? So people have been telling you that, you know, governments are telling that, why the uh, cash transaction? You go for the cashless transactions. Why? Because uh, this kind of uh, coronavirus uh, may get transmitted by different means. Of course, it, uh, it is carried from one person to person only. When persons come with each other, touch each other only. So these kind of matters, like even the currencies, etc., may not spread by itself. But when a person touches a note and then it goes to the another person, automatically there is a chance of uh, contagion, right? So that is why people are saying that avoid uh, tendering cashes and all that is going for digital transactions. Digital transaction is not a new thing. It has been there uh, for the past two, three years and uh, tremendously increasing, right? And even a common person today, even for the purchase of 100 rupees or 50, uh, 50 rupees, uh, we immediately going for this kind of UPI transactions. What is UPI? Unified Payments Interface. Basically, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting digital transaction technology. You have a lot of payment gateways, different payment gateways through which, you know, when you want to promote your own business, you can go in for the APIs, right? You can give wide options for your customers to pay. A person may have a banking with the Canada Bank, another person may have with the State Bank of India, I mean, kind of things. No, we cannot stop the people from doing that particular thing. So we have third party vendors, payment gateways. You should only know how to integrate that into your application. Very interesting, trustworthy uh, things are available today. So in the presence of a lot of security concerns and uh, a lot of uh, more secured uh, gateways are available, which you can explore digital transactions. These are all some of the representative payment gateways for hosting providers like a PayPal, Tube Checkout, uh, Razor Pay, CC Avenue. It's a very famous thing that we have also experimented uh, with uh, the Centac admissions and all that. Brain cheap. All these. This is not an exhaustive list. You know, some top payment uh, kind of things. These are all interesting digital applications. Yeah. So coming to this education sector, smart classrooms, remote laboratory is a very interesting thing that I wanted to tell you. Right. Smart classrooms, I need not have to say much about it right, because uh, many of you might have experienced and this is also a smart classroom using a Google Meet, using uh, uh, Zoom kind of things and many students uh, internationally, you know, have attend classes and all that. Google Classroom is there, virtual classroom is available where people submit uh, assignments, conduct examinations and all. Very interesting things are available. So which we call them as learning management systems. LMS stand for the learning management system. There's so much of learning management systems are available today. Uh, Google Classroom is one, one such thing. Then you have Office 365 from Microsoft. There's a thing called Moodle and uh, the list goes along, right? So it is only uh, the interest that a teacher uh, should show onto that particular uh, LMS. And then there's a lot of open source things are also available, right? People can use that particular learning management systems can be used. What I want to enhance, highlight here is that the remote laboratories. Today, it is possible not only for a teacher and uh, to deliver his lecture and the students watch and then ask questions, right? The students can also leverage the remote laboratories. For the past 75, 76 days, what is the handicap for the students? Uh, teaching and learning is not stopped. It is a continuous process is going on. Even when I have completed my syllabus for whatever the subject that are allocated to me. I have conducted exams, internal marks have been finalized. But the only thing is that they are good for the theory subjects. For the laboratory, yeah, if it is a programming laboratory, it is not a problem, right? Programming laboratory also, you need to only have your own laptop and all, and all that. But what if you want to have some specialized uh, tools, software tools, which you cannot afford to have, but it is there in the laboratory. For example, simulators, uh, emulators, etc. Circuit simulators, etc., as well, which we cannot buy, right? So, in such cases, there are a lot of uh, virtual laboratories available. The institutions can set up, right? So, the students can go to the virtual laboratories, do the experiments using the tools that are available over there, and then they can validate it. Even if those kind of uh, 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 simulators are not available in your laptop or in your computer, you can virtually log on do the experiments, many number of people can concurrently do, get the output and then the teachers can validate and so on. So the research is not stopped that particular thing. So I'm going to deliver uh, 
uh, an exclusive topic on this learning management systems on Friday uh, in the ages of uh, St. Joseph College, which you can find from the net. So if you're interested, you can also see some of the demos. In that so this is another very interesting application of the digital uh, technologies. Smart city, the topic set smart living. So it makes the digital technologies basically make, uh, you know, the living smart, right? The people have to be smart, right? If you're not smart enough learning in this particular technologies, we cannot really enjoy this particular thing, right? And then uh, spot living, when I say, in what it com comes to your mind immediately is smart city. Right? This is also one of the very important mission of several countries in the world, and especially Digital India initiatives is one of the major. Right? So it becomes reality through Digital India project. There are a lot of things that are coming, smart parking, smart metering, smart trafficking, smart policing, and, and so on. It is not an uh, exhaustive list. A lot of interesting aspects are coming. These things are possible with the advantage of the digital technologies, right? Uh, with your embedded systems, uh, IoT, right? Internet of uh, things, concepts, embedded systems, uh, big data analytics, right? Uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning technologies. Blend of all these things make the smart city into a reality by the e-governance projects. So this is an example of the uh, uh, smart cities government website. Right, so, so much of missions are available. Even our Pondicherry is also uh, some of the I mean uh, things are areas are uh, identified to become the smart cities as well. Right? So to conclude, yes, digital, 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 digital is everywhere, right? So what we are seeing that uh, the world is analog. What we see, what we listen, what we feel is all about analog, right? So what, what basically uh, the computers or these kind of technologies do is that convert the analog into digital, right? Because accuracy is more. Doing things only with analog uh, does not give you the accuracy. A lot of uh, potential is available for the losses of the signals, attenuation, etc. When you digitize, right, the exact replica is possible. Storage is possible, right? So it can be taken for a long distance of kind of things. And then when you want to interact with the world, Right, so interact with the world, you should be again analog, right? So, for example, your voice is sampled into digital numbers. When you want to play back to another system, you should be synthesized. So, we want to convert into analog. So, we need to have analog to digital, digital to analog, whereas we call them as the signal processing. So, so, it is the inner thing, the digital technologies everywhere. That is why we call it digital technologies. So, it starts with the processing, security. Security is a huge topic. A lot of security threats are available. And again, the digital techniques play a vital role. All the information theory and coding techniques play a vital role over there. All right? The communications, the smart society, making the society smart, digital techniques, smart city projects, etc. Right? So the application of the digital technologies, sky, or even beyond, is the limit. Right? So much of uh, avenues are available, already there. Present technologies are available. Some of them I have given as a hint here. Please uh, start learning about all these kind of things and uh, you can use it for uh, for your career, right? So create technologies, learn technologies. You can really prosper with this kind of digital technologies. So I stop my lecture after this. So if you have any specific questions, I can uh, answer. And again, um, <coughs> apologize uh, for uh, the break, inconvenience of task to interruptions right so hope uh, i have given you an overview of what is the digital technology the present and i think in fact i started with the past right the past and then the present and then some of the future technologies talking about the future technology just one hour is not that simple i have uh, managed my best to uh, throw some light on that particular right so so you have any questions i am open to the questions Any questions? You can uh, you can chat. Um, now the coordinators, I think uh, they will uh, give you the feedback links. So please 
do that, uh, give a feedback. And in future, I hope uh, the MNGP will host a uh, lot more interesting topics, not by me, a lot of eminent uh, professors, eminent uh, alumni is, is still available. You can subscribe to this particular channel in, in which you are watching and uh, you can do that. Uh, Janathan sir, you can uh, you can post the feedback link uh, for the viewers so that they can use it. Uh, viewers, any questions? You please ask me. You can ask me in the chat window. Otherwise, you can take my email address also, uh, and uh, you can always converse with me. So I'm seeing one question. Bandwidth requirement and the reality. What is the difference between bandwidth requirement and the reality? So bandwidth um, basically is the rate at which the information goes on the channel, right? So it varies, uh, the requirement varies depending upon the what you want to see, right? For uh, streaming of the voice or streaming of the video, etc. You really require to have a good bandwidth, moderately good bandwidth, right? So it is usually usually expressed in terms of uh, bits per second, as you might be aware. So for for example, this kind of thing, if you want to upload your video stream, you might require uh, moderately about some uh, two Mbps link is good enough to do that particular thing. So uh, if you don't really stream your video, then if you are only watching or watching also downloading might require moderately good amount of uh, bandwidth. But if you don't do with this kind of video streaming and all that, only textual information, file transfer, etc., we do require very less bandwidth. Just less than about 1 Mbps should be sufficient. Right? So that is purely characterized by your available uh, your available bandwidth uh, with respect to your network connectivity is considered. Yes, I can start. Good morning to everyone. I am to Kar Saida Udavi, I am to Kim Nanmai Karalin Piridi. Vote of thanks. Dear participants, after a very valuable and a highly informative presentation, 
of our esteemed resource person of this webinar. This is the time for a vote of thanks. I extend the vote of thanks on behalf of our institution, Motilal Nehru Government Polytechnic College, Pondicherry. First of all, I thank our participant, uh, sorry, I thank our principal, Mr. V. Pasupati, for having given this opportunity to extend vote of thanks and being a motivator for organizing this webinar. I extend my immense gratitude and uh, thanks to the expert speaker, Dr. Ka Silvaraju, Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Pondicherry Engineering College, who has offered his acceptance without any hesitation, admits this busy schedule and uh, making a valuable presentation of the Digitechies, I mean the participants. I am very happy to share the valuable information that Dr. Ka Silvaraju is an alumnus of our EC department of this institution. I must thank all the participants who have made the session a grand success. Nearly 1000 participants has graced this occasion due to some Technical difficulties, the program is interrupted, but even then, many of the participants have connected in. I also thank Dr. J. Gandhi Mohan. He is also one of the alumni of our institution for motivating our department along with Dr. Ka Silvaraju for organizing many seminars and webinars. I must extend my heartfelt thanks to Dr. K. Nagakartigan, Dr. T. Prem Kumar, Dr. V. Dev Kumar, and Mr. Justin Yesaya, and also Mr. N. R. Ramesh, who are senior faculties who have extended their constant support till the end of this webinar. I should also thank the coordinators Sorry, co-coordinators, Shri S. Mahindran, academic in charge of information technology department, and Mrs. D. Suganti, academic in charge of electronics and communication engineering department for their unstinting support to keep rolling this webinar on a positive track. At last, but not the least, I thank all the staff members of the institution who have directly or indirectly supported for organizing the team in making this webinar in a grand success. Once again, thank you all. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, nice words. And uh, thank you, all the coordinators who have taken pain in, in uh, making this a grand success. Uh, I must uh, thank uh, this particular juncture, one of my students called T.S. Karthikeyan, finally a student, who has made this background that you are seeing, you know, uh, the banner that the video, uh, banner that you are seeing. Uh, just about uh, uh, a few minutes, no? like uh, yesterday night only I told him to create this particular banner. And very beautifully designed and uh, you are now he's assisting. I thank him very much. Thank uh, you, Scott, again. Uh, uh, thank you all participants for your wonderful uh, feedback and uh, we'll meet again. Thank you. Bye.